Hello and welcome to another episode of the Miami Hal Real Estate Show. Hav Gonzalez, welcome back. back. It's well, been I'm about back. five weeks. It's uh, if that if that. Yes. No, yeah. I think we did it from before. I think I was here like three weeks ago, four no, weeks ago. It's... How come I don't get a TV? Oh, you know what? Alex just uh, prefers to give me the TV. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's anyway, so sad. Folks, we're here. As you can see, we always are open and have fun when we talk to each other. And we're hoping that during the next half hour, we can educate you a little bit along the way. Hav Gonzalez, a fellow realtor right at Remax Advanced Realty. Absolutely. So we're in the same office, but neither one of us spent a lot of time in the actual office. What office? Exactly, exactly. What office? And, and we are, uh, last time we were together, it was before the big changeover to the MLS. And I'm hoping that the folks in the audience generally know this. And by the way, if you have questions, we'd love to get your questions during the show because Tom and I have an idea of where we're going, but you can take it to a new level if you like. <laughs> you really um, could. If I had a TV, I would be able to answer those questions. So across the country, it was deemed in this NAR settlement, National mm -hmm. Association of Realtors, that the commissions that were offered to buyers, agents, and brokers was to be removed on August the 17th. Um, it turns out that uh, Miami-Dade County chose to do it a few days earlier, so 13th. as of August the 13th. Yes. None of us know what's going on if we're working with a, a buyer or somebody that's going to rent something here, right? No one has a clue. <laughs> and it, Absolute it, it, chaos. Look, any time in uh, an industry you know, makes a change yep. like this, we're going to see a lot of confusion for a while. And as I was having a conversation with somebody else yesterday, um, we have a particular amount of confusion here in Miami-Dade County mm -hmm. because, as you know, we're number one at a couple of things, and one of them is being confused. Uh, Ab there's new absolutely. Stuff. Absolutely. With the yeah. amount of realtors that we have in this town, it, it's, com it's confusing when we kind of knew what was going on. Now right. it's just right. out of control. And so I feel, I really feel, mm -hmm. for anybody that's watching this show, the audience mm -hmm. and the consumers, yep. which, by the way, is another term that we're now being told we should use, not client, mm -hmm. not customer, right. but consumers, mm -hmm. because they are consumers of our services to help them buy or rent something or to sell something right. yeah. or to be landlord, right? By, by the way, so, before I forget, yeah. the DOJ is now having a new one that I just heard about where they're going to be talking about price fixing because they feel that for some of the, for the rentals, yeah. right? Now, HUD uses that formulation for their rental programs nationally, Yeah. right? Now, yes. they're going after that as a... Right. Uh, so, I, I really teetered on the edge, and I, I'm sharing absolutely. this a little bit with the audience, about where to take this show, because we can talk about this from several different vantage mm -hmm. points. Um, you just brought up one of them, which is, we had an industry that was functioning before this. Maybe mm -hmm. not at 100%, no, but it was functional. Does, though. Um, and what this settlement has done, uh, and primarily because of the number of attorneys that are circling, um, it has created chaos. Mm -hmm. And one thing is for absolute certain, the attorneys are going to get very, very wealthy circling the real estate model and pool, correct? Should be, yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully they'll make some money. Wait a you, 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 well, you, you know, are, we've, you're we've been rooting taking, for the attorneys to make money. Yeah, absolutely. Remember, we, you know, the title <laughs> guys didn't make any money. They always li didn't like us because we made more than they did. Right. So this is payback. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, this is the attitude you're going to get from Hop Gonzalez. <laughs> What's your phone number? <laughs> <laughs> Give All me right, a call. <laughs> look, so, so here we are. And what I'd really like to do, even though it's, uh, I've got stuff inside me that wants to come out. Let's look at this from the consumer's point of view. Mm -hmm. The consumer is also confused, but it, for different reasons. They're confused they because they, confused they hear from things. The well, they, yes, but now they're, yeah, I think, now even more yeah, so, right? Yeah, absolutely. So the consumers were thinking, okay, there's a settlement now mm -hmm. where. Not, the, that oh, not everybody follows. That's true. Very important okay, to note that. Those that followed it. Those that followed because a lot of people now don't follow it. That the commissions are no longer advertised in the MLS. Concessions. Well, the commissions, because it was commissions, right? The commissions are no longer advertised in the MLS. Right. And so a lot of people are thinking, well, I can then offer no commission to a buyer's agent now because, Correct. hey, it's not advertised, Correct. so why would I do it? Right. Right? They still have to engage a listing agent. Yes. 
and figure out a commission structure that makes sense for them. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And they sign a document called a listing agreement, agreement right? right? That's pretty plain. And right. that, that, that listing agreement has been around forever. And it literally is, because I want to be very accurate about what we're talking about today. If I go out and I speak to somebody that wants to sell their home and they agree they're going to list... We, we in the industry say, oh, I got a new listing. Right. But it's not me, no. right? It's Remax Advanced Realty, the, the broker. Right. Our madam. <laughs> yes. That got the listing. I am representing that on behalf of Remax. Yeah, that's, how right? I used to, that's how I used to teach real estate, by the way. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So you get a listing agreement. Uh -huh. And in a, the old listing agreement, it was pretty simple. Yeah. Okay. I am going to pay an overall commission of X. Right. And, and we're going to share Y. We're going to share a portion of X mm -hmm. with whoever brings us a buyer. Right. And oh, by the way, it could be Remax Advance yeah. that keeps it in house, right? Absolutely. Not that we would artificially do that, but nope. from time to time, absolutely. If you have it, the if you same have, agent that yeah. lists it could have somebody come in on absolutely. an open house that's yeah. not represented, and they would get all of X. Double right? dipping it, baby. That's what we call it. Double dipping. I mean, we hope for it, but we don't yeah. steer for it, right? Nope. No. Um, so anyway, and it's always going to blow the up. Listing oh, yeah. Now, yeah. and by the way, the listing agreement said when we agree as a seller that you're going to get X and you're going to offer Y, mm -hmm. okay, it's in the listing agreement. Yeah. Hey, I'm only giving you X if you advertise the Y that you're going to give somebody else. Correct. Not there anymore. No. So, the listing agreement has changed in, in at its very core. Right. Same services are provided. Mm -hmm. But now what it says, interestingly enough, is I'm going to pay you X. It's a new X. Okay, we'll call it the new X. And in the um, MLS, rather than a commission that's being offered, we can do one of two things. And it's a yes or no. Optional, you, too. Yeah. Do you want us to put into the MLS that you will give the buyer a concession? And that's not the, a key. Not an agent. Correct. A concession to the actual buyer. Yes or no. Okay, that's so at least there's general knowledge right. that there's going to be some help from the seller. But there's no number attached to it. Right, no number. And the other thing is uh, the, the seller, yes or no, would consider some kind of compensation being handled in their offer and ultimately the contract. Right. So that, that, uh, that uh, further negotiation, I'll call it, could either be that the seller would pay a buyer broker mm -hmm. commission, right. commission, or again a concession to just hearing to you explain it, right? Just hearing you explain it will tell the seller, listen, just give them whatever they want, <laughs> sell the damn house, right? So there's a lot more mm -hmm. dials right. and whistles mm -hmm. that but we have to that, figure out. It's all the same, and more importantly, it's the same crap at the end. I have a, a phrase: six of this and half a dozen mm -hmm. of the other. Yep, right. That's what this is. Same thing. The question is, prior to this settlement, the commission that was... That not everyone follows. Right. Well, we'll get to that, too. The commission was all handled mm -hmm. right at the beginning, before the listing was even a listing. Yeah, yeah. And then there was no question about how that was going to be handled. Now the questions remain during negotiation with a buyer mm -hmm. and could even be in play mm -hmm. up to the day of closing. Yeah. It's wonderful not times. Fun. Absolutely wonderful times. But the time. attorneys are making some money. Fortunately I, for right, them, I'm you're, super happy for them. <laughs> you I must really have am. an attorney on your back. Uh, yeah. No. Okay. Um, so yeah. tell me what you feel the average consumer is going to do with all these extra choices. And, and let's uh, well, start we, just there. Yeah, I think, I think from, a seller, from a seller standpoint, it's pretty straightforward. I don't okay. think that changes at all. All right. Um, but I think from a buyer standpoint, uh, and and we haven't even talked about tenants yet, but from a buyer standpoint, I think you're going to have to spend a lot of time with that buyer explaining yeah. that they're on the hook or could be potentially on the hook for uh, um, a compensation um, um, for a purchase of a property. Now, how those buyers are accepting this reality, um, I think is what's put kind of a, um, a pause on the market uh, currently because I think there's still um, not a, a, not an idea of what's going on with, you know, what's going to happen. And you brought up something very, very interesting. Let's say you do your buyer's agreement. It's, you know, 
And the buyer, seller says, well, I'm going to give the buyer 3%. The buyer gets two points. Not bad. Because the, your agreement with them is one. So, And that's, I think, one of the key elements that most people, and I think even agents don't kind of get it, is that any concession goes to the buyer, not to the brokerage or the agent. And if you do not have something in place, that is going to be. Now, here's more important. Let's say, so you go do the property, and we'll see this. This will happen because this is Miami. So it's guaranteed it's going to happen if it hasn't happened already. Buyer gets his concession. He doesn't want to pay the buyer's agent. Now you got to sue, and you got to go through this whole process. Is Attorneys it worth it? are going to make more money. Is it worth it for a point? Right. Or you just basically screw you, buyer, and the hell with them. Okay. So that's going to be our next little thing. You you got us right into the next progression. So there's a listing agreement for somebody that mm -hmm. wants to sell their home. Yep. Now somebody- Be and a I'm, listing agent. That's all I can tell you. Agreed. <laughs> that's always been that way. Yep. List the last. But there are a lot of buyer agents out there. There used to be. There still are, but maybe not there for used long. used to be. <laughs> so if you are a buyer's agent, mm -hmm. prior to August the 13th mm -hmm. here in Miami-Dade yep. County- you were not very smart, but you ha you were free to find somebody that wanted to buy with yep. you, mm -hmm. go give them a bunch of listings from the MLS, right. take them out and show them homes yep. with no written form between Agreement. you and that Correct. buyer Correct. about how you were going to be compensated Correct. because most of the homes had compensation coming from the listing the, the, the owner of the home. Which will lead me to another thing is that from now with this, one of the pros is that you will know who's a buyer. That's true. All right. But so we're, we're going back to this because you're absolutely right. There's now mm -hmm. and always actually has been a buyer broker yes, agreement. Absolutely. And the buyer broker agreement up until the 13th arguably was optional. Mm hmm. Because I know a lot of good agents yeah. that just said, you know what, I trust yeah, the they're, buyer they're that I'm people. working with. Yeah, yeah. When we get there, we get there, and I'll get paid what I'm going to get paid. Right Now it is a requirement, and I'm underscoring the word requirement, from the National Association of Realtors. If, you participate, if you participate in yes. a lawsuit. Okay, <laughs> it's true. That you must get mm -hmm. a buyer broker agreement, yep. not just to understand the compensation, but let's say somebody calls you on the phone, Hobbs. Mm -hmm. And they say, listen, I, I don't know Miami well, and I'm thinking about buying something for three million bucks. Right. You as an agent are going to be pretty happy with that because, hey, yeah, that's a, a decent it's, piece of business. It's a scam. Right? <laughs> well, it could, okay, let's, let, let's assume you figure out it's not a scam because <laughs> okay. there are plenty of scams yeah. out there. Somebody calls you. Yep. They, you qualify them. They actually are capable of doing this. And I want to see um, a bunch of properties when I come in in two weeks. Right. Can you send me some listings from the MLS? So I get a taste of what's mm -hmm. going on in Miami and what my money right. can buy. Right. And your answer is? I need a buyer's broker agreement. Oh, my gosh. How did That's a sea change from what it was before. Yep. And now this person says, what are you talking about? I don't even know who you are. Why would I sign an agreement to exclusively work with you? Because I don't know who you are. Right. <laughs> and we have a standoff, don't uh -huh. we? No. We have a standoff. And, and, they'll, and they'll, rightfully they'll keep so. They'll keep shopping to an agent that will just send them information. <clears throat> right. So. so it goes back to the same thing when we had the listings. When you told the listing, you know, the person says, you know, uh, this property's worth, which is another conversation we're going to have, because there's some properties out there on the market, kids, that I have no idea how people are pricing these things. So one just came up for three million bucks, and I looked at it over and over, and I'm thinking to myself, what? <laughs> So again, when you're going for a listing and you're go you're going to the uh, for a listing presentation, the same thing. You, you know, you get somebody that says this was this is worth eight eight million dollars, and you say no, it's not. It's worth you know eight hundred thousand. And they say, well, I'll go get me another agent. Go get me another agent. Go. I ain't wasting. I ain't wasting my time. Okay. So sorry, I just went off on a tangent. No, that's absolutely fine. But from the consumer standpoint, I, all I want is a, a list mm -hmm. of homes. Yeah. No, you need a buyer broker agreement. Mm -hmm. What it's a standoff, is it not? Go to Zillow, dude. <laughs> and and how how's Zillow? I know your favorite company out there. Love those people. Okay. How's Zillow going to survive this? I don't have any. I have what that was the first conversation that I had when it first came up. And outside of and again, I'm I don't yeah. like third party sites just to begin because they sell the listings. Now you're selling a listing to somebody that has to get a buyer's brokers agreement to be able to do this. It's just. It is going to be a very, very uh, interesting time. And we, we talked about it. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be I won't attribute months. this, but we both know somebody who's very smart mm -hmm. and influential in this business. Mm -hmm. 
And I'll give the first part of the word and the answer that I got about this whole thing is cluster something. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. Um, Fun time. How do we get out of this cluster? I just give it time. Okay. So you believe yeah. time heals all wounds. Yeah. In this, in this case, it'll, it'll just, you'll see that it, there'll be something that will come back into a standardized uh, practice. And I'm not talking about the commissions or the compensation. I'm talking about the actual uh, body of the deal. It's going to become very standardized that most of the deals are going to go A, B, C, and D. Instead of what we currently are dealing with, because you have a lot of new nuances that people don't understand. But remember, just and again, we can write a contract that's a basic contract. So you already know that when you're going to write a deal, right? right it's an as-is contract. Correct. So what are you going to fill in? You're going to fill in inspection, commitment, time, closing date, deposits, blah, blah, blah. And then maybe one little weird thing that you want. You know, I want 2% for something, whatever. That's standardized already. So I think what's going to happen is our industry will get to a point where uh, step listing agreements are going to be A. The buyer's agreements are going to be B. They're going to be very, very seem like very simple stuff that's going to happen. And they're going to become basic. So it's going to be a standardized, we're going to pay this on the listing side. The buyer side is going to pay this on the buyer side. We're going to negotiate it on the back end. It's just going to be an acceptable, understood practice from all sides that will bring it right back to where we were before the lawsuit that not everyone follows. Okay. Wonderfully stated. If I'm going to circle, I don't even know I'm, I'm going to circle back on it a little bit. Oh, good God! <laughs> you said the word standard and standardized several times. Uh -huh. Is that not what these attorneys got us in trouble for in the first place? Where they said there's a standard commission when there never was. There never was a standard commission. Okay. Okay. But what uh, the process? In the process, it will become that it'll be the dance will be routine, the, routine, the same type type of thing. Okay. You you still will have a different you know different you know outlier some something that is a little bit different. And the but buyer the part, or the seller can augment, and always has yeah. been able to augment the sure. routine. Absolutely. But when you've got closing companies that do mm -hmm. three or four closings mm -hmm. a day, and they do it the same way yeah. ninety nine percent of the time, mm -hmm. you hope that as time yeah. heals all wounds, that there's a new way to do this. Mm -hmm. It, it, it'll just be, it'll, it'll be, be just come, it'll become a what we call standard operating procedure. Okay. Hi, you're the listing agent. I'm the buyer's agent. How? What are you paying? Right. Which hey, is listen, new, by the you're way. You're a buyer. They're paying this. You pay me that. Okay, we're good. Fine. Done. Right. Yeah. I love that. And on paper, it sounds good. Mm -hmm. I actually really appreciate mm -hmm. that. The person that you're doing services for, mm -hmm. either as a listing agent mm -hmm. or as a buyer's mm -hmm. agent, are the people that are paying you. Yeah. That I love. Yeah. Because I agree that with, makes I agree sense. With it. I agree right? with that. that, that yeah. Who cannot agree right. with that? Hey, right. um, Hav, I'd like you to shovel all that dirt from my front yard to the backyard. I'm an immigrant. I have three jobs. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of so, them, by the way. So you could charge yeah. me and I would pay you, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. How In cash, I, though. Listen, In cash. Hav, take In cash. that. And cash. And cash. Cash. <laughs> Under the table. Cash. No, I didn't say that. Um, I'll pay you to move that dirt from the front yard to the backyard, mm -hmm. but but this guy over here, he's going to pay it. Right. Yeah. Like, it's been weird yeah. like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's what has worked, but I do like the fact that we now have signed agreements, mm -hmm. if you do it right, between the agent and the person that they're working with. I, t I tell the story. When I first started, I used to do a lot of uh, rentals. I still do a lot of rental uh, a business. And I remember my first month, my first month, uh, and it was August that, was, uh, that I was actually kind of employed in the sense. Um, and I did five rentals and I made like, I don't know, five grand. I'm thinking to myself, I can do this all. I can do this all damn day long. I mean, <laughs> I enjoy it and run around. I go look at, I meet a lot of people. I go uh, look at stuff and I write no deals. Happened. And then I, no, no, the, the whole point was, <laughs> but in one of them, in one yeah. of them, it was interesting because I, uh, kind of went into a broker's agreement because uh, I said to some some people coming down, uh, they were coming down from Washington, and I said, okay, fine. How you know how does this work? And I said, well, you can pay my portion. And you should have seen like everybody said, what? No, I'm not paying you. 
And I was like, hey, I want okay. free from yeah. you. So no, it doesn't the other person pay you. And at the same, the, the reason we were doing that is because we were looking at properties that were off market or they weren't listed, or I was going into buildings that didn't compensate, but they wanted to be in those buildings. We did a lot, I did a lot of relocations early on. And I tried that like once or twice, and I figured, okay, let's see how this plays out. It doesn't play out well, kids. Okay. Nobody, because there's so, no, they now don't, that it's mandated, they don't is have, it gonna play they out don't well? have money to do it. That's the other thing we haven't touched they, upon. But first of all, now it's money. mandated. Is it gonna work out? You say yes. Oh yeah, it'll eventually work out, but it's still gonna fall on the seller. Okay. Because the seller, ha ad nauseum, seller has the money. Buyers don't have money. Buyers are hard pressed to qualify. And in this market in Miami-Dade County, where we're the highest uh, basic cost of living in housing, we're number one. You, the buyers just don't have that kind of coin. I'm not talking about the ultra rich. They're gonna, they're always gonna be fine and dandy, and they don't give a shit about. Sorry, um, it's no longer a family show. It's folks. no longer a family show, <laughs> uh, and it never has been when I'm here. Uh, but I think what ends up happening is it, they they don't care. They'll pay you whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, the buyers, the, the your your, you know, and not entry level, but the, any buyer that's that's just coming in, they don't have the money to do So they, they barely have enough money. This is typical. To qualify. To qualify, mm -hmm. to have money for a down payment, mm -hmm. to have closing costs. And to, fix the, and to fix the property. And so the reason why the prior version of all mm -hmm. this worked mm -hmm. is that the commission was paid at closing mm -hmm. and was baked into the sales price. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so in reality... Mm -hmm. It was the, the commissions were financed over 30 yeah, years, right? right? Yeah. And it came out to a couple of pennies, and that's the way it worked. Now we have to reinvent mm -hmm. ourselves, and the buyers and sellers have to figure out how to work yeah. in that regard. Yeah. You touched upon something which I want to dig in on. So you're saying that this is no longer be a family this, show? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, let's stay away from that oh, word. Okay. Uh, but you were saying that the, the seller ultimately is going to be the yeah. the the, the Pivot point of yeah, this. Absolutely. You go to sign up somebody for a brand new list. Mm -hmm. It's today. Mm -hmm. So we're past the settlement yep. date. How do you approach them and what do you tell them um, would be, be in their best interest? In their best interest to offer compensation. Okay. Compensation how? Are you going to say, listen, all this stuff is fine, well, mm -hmm. and good. I can't advertise it. But when somebody calls mm -hmm. me, yeah. I will tell them what you right. are going to compensate the broker. Right. Or, or are you going to say, Compensation should be in the no, form of a of, of a concession to. It's the, going to be a concession oh. to the buyer. Okay. Absolutely. So you're not walking in suggesting that there continues to be a buyer broker commission. It goes through the buyer. Okay. So now I uh, you, you're listed. Right. You've got your percentage for mm -hmm. yourself, mm -hmm. and you got nothing else. What are you putting in the MLS? On the little thing. Yeah. That it, we will uh, do a concession to the buyer. Okay. So that that box is checked off. Mm -hmm. Now, I call you up, mm -hmm. and I've got five homes I want to see. You don't know right. that. And I say, listen, Hav, uh, you have a house that my customer wants to see. Um, is it available next Tuesday? Yes, it is. Um, are you offering no, any No, it's commission? not available Tuesday. Oh. <laughs> you got to go to the open house on Saturday. Very good. Even better. What is but, wrong with you, Tuesday? And, and so I'm what, busy on Tuesday. you got to golf. i right got to play golf. Okay. okay. So, I'm and, old. And what about con commission? How do I get paid? I don't know. You tell me. Uh, you, you're the, oh, really? you better have a buyer. There's no, there, there's no commission available? To a buyer? Oh, Con concession, concession to the, to the buyer. buyer. Do you have a do you have a buyer what, broker's what, agreement, young man? On. Okay. So we're still on the phone talking about that. Yeah. What is the concession to the buyer? I'm not telling you. Why not? Because I can't. Oh. New wrinkle in this, I think. You can't, as a listing agent, tell me what the concession is going to be to the buyer. Correct. Okay. And I, as a, bro a, a signed buyer broker agreement. Mm -hmm. You have a number. I've got a number that I know that that buyer's on the hook for. Correct. Okay. But <clears throat> I can't tell that to you either. Nope. We got a, another stalemate, don't we? And by the way, I have to tell you something. It ain't worth what... The, it ain't worth the paper it's written on, yep. on the buyer side. I just went through a rental, okay? Same setup, by mm -hmm. the way. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I had the listing, and somebody came to me, and they wanted to rent the property right. as well. So I had both the right. potential which is very tenant. Com which is very common very in the rental com market. 
and we went through a whole process. And then the tenant, after they had a lease signed, mm -hmm. which is when I and my agreement says I've earned my you get paid. commission yes. from that buyer. Yes, compensation. Not from the buyer, from the tenant. Okay? I have a signed agreement. Yep. I've done my work. I'm supposed to be paid. That tenant then decided, you know what? I'm not going to apply. I'm not going to do this. I'm right. not going to do that. I am basically going to break the lease before anything started. Correct. And I wanted to get paid because right. I did my work. You Guess what? Yeah. Never going to happen. No. Am I going to chase? Who's no. going to chase that? And I even just so I had a conversation, I talked to our broker at mm -hmm. Remax. Yeah. And I said, listen, I did my work. I've got the signed agreement, which is required. I've turned in everything yep. to you proper. Will you go and invoice them? No. No. Not worth it. No, it's not worth it. Because we're not going to pay attorneys right. more money. Correct. How's not in this feel? case. How's that feel? That it's just part of doing this business, yeah. man. It okay. is. You know. You know. You know that that's going to happen. But I, you can have. In my twenty plus years, however, I don't know how long I've been doing this. You can. You have those red flags already thrown out there. Okay. One other thing, because we're going back to you being the listing agent. You already have your listing. Mm -hmm. I call you. What percentage of the people that are going to call you, the mm -hmm. listing agent, mm -hmm. will properly have a buyer broker agreement in place? They won't. Oh, but I it's a requirement, huh? I can, I can guarantee you. They're first feeling the market out, and they okay. say, okay, this guy's getting paid. This guy's getting paid. They're going to angle let's, to see how much you're paying. Good, so then they go to their broker's agreement and say, okay, I can know I'm going to get this. Listen, let's play this through. It's going to be a lot of fun. I, I don't think it's zero, but I think it's a very low percentage of people that will have a proper buyer broker mm -hmm. agreement. Yeah. So I called you and I said, what's the compensation? And you said to me, you get nothing. Right. There's, a, con there's a concession to the buyer, right. but you get nothing. Now, what does the average agent mm -hmm. who does not have a buyer broker agreement do with that information? Do are they, They're supposed to go back to their customer mm -hmm. and say, listen, you can see the house on Tuesday because right. I made sure Hob didn't play golf. Right. <laughs> Damn. Um, that's what they're supposed to do because yeah. we as agents are supposed to expose the entire market to the customer, let the customer make right. the decision on what they want to see and what they want to place offers on. Right. But I just found out from you that I get nothing. Right. And because I didn't do my homework and right. I didn't do something that I was supposed to do, I don't have a buyer broker agreement. Why would I tell that buyer that the house is available yeah. for them to see it all? So Didn't we cause more trouble absolutely. than we had before? Absolutely. Without without a doubt. I mean, we, we were expecting this. But then what you'll do is we'll meet in person and I'll go like this and I'll look, I'll, I'll go like that for you. And I'll tell you that's what I'm paying or this is what I'm paying. <laughs> I'll, I'll do this. Right. So wow. uh, it's just, it is, again, we're, we knew that this was going to happen. We knew we were going to be here for, you know, three or four months figuring it out. But we'll figure it out. Okay. The other thing that, the president of the United States said, I think it was in June, which really got me upset, is we're going to fix this all so that consumers pay less for their homes. We're going to make housing more affordable by making sure that realtors don't make the commissions they once did. <clears throat> With all this being said, do you believe over the next six to nine months as this thing shakes out that the commissions will go down from where they have been? No, commissions are not the issue or the problem. Okay, they yeah. never have been in housing. We live in a country of supply and demand. Right. When you take away supply and when the demand is there, how are we taking away supply? All of you Airbnbers, <laughs> you've taken away supply. Yes, that's for sure. Okay, all of your main huge companies. Uh, Black. What is, yeah taking away inventory yeah. we zoning laws take away inventory we that make a living doing this job know that we talk about that we're telling the folks that that are supposed to making those things but what's the easy target commissions okay right very quickly because we're really out of time don't get me started on this okay next um, show next show Next show? Oh, yeah. Next show, okay. we're going to talk about all of that. Okay. And that's your housing problem. All right. I will also just and layer Miami in on top of all board. the things that are going on. We will see some kind of movement after the November election. 
Because oh, yeah. during every election cycle, no, things slow down. See, People are see, like, I don't know what's happening, so no, I'm doing September, nothing. In September, you're going to see uh, you're going to see the rates move. So hopefully, they'll move half a point. Half point or yeah. a quarter point? No, Where, what I would camp do are a, you in? I would do a half. Okay. Consensus is still a quarter, but yeah, we hope for a half. Yeah. Until next week, have a great week in real estate. Are we over? <laughs> We're oh, over. Oh, that was fast, God, man. That was.